each character is not exactly sculpted to perfection. The idea is they've been printed or they've been painted. If the imperfections are too regular, they kind of become a pattern. And once something becomes a pattern, it looks generated. So he's trying to add all these kind of kinks in there and applying them subtly. Straight up. Cash in, cash out, cash in, cash out, cash out, cash out. Cash out. I'm Jules de Châtelet and I'm an executive producer at Division. François Rousselet, director. My name is Ian Murray, and I'm the head of 2D at Electric Theatre Collective. I'm Greg McNeely, and I'm head of CG at Electric Theatre Collective. The track with a chorus that has like a loop, cash in, cash out, cash in, cash out. That's one thing that triggers the idea of playing with looping action. We were always looking for repetitiveness. At first, we were looking for in-camera solution, rigging a camera to a cash machine, cash in, cash out, you know, and it would go in and out. But we were looking for tricks like that. And as we were writing... The pandemic got bigger and bigger. And we're like, maybe we need to find a solution that we don't need to be on set, actually. And when we told the guys from the label and the artists that we wanted to pitch something in full post-production, they were like, ah, no, we really want to see a performance in camera. And with François, we were like, well, let's talk about it in 10 days. And then 10 days after, they called and they were like, yeah, actually, that COVID thing is big. And you're the only one to offer a post-production solution. So then we really had to go into the details of each scenes, each character, how is it laid out? The Zootrop is like little looping action characters or drawings, but on a bigger as well looping element, which is a, a carousel. The idea came in from Francois and Jules to make a 3D Zootrope. And we didn't know exactly how we were going to do it, but we thought it sounded amazing. And so we immediately set to with some tests to try to learn the rules of how a Zootrope works. We got a load of really cool references from Francois of looping actions and uh, animated GIFs. And we realized we had to create a set of two second loops to be able to tell the story in a series of loops. We also knew that we really wanted from the beginning for this project to feel physical. We set a bunch of rules about how we were going to approach it. We were keen to actually blur the lines between is it real or is it CG? We did get some references from the artists and they were great for uh, personality reference, but it didn't quite work for animation reference. But we did set to the process of recreating each of these characters as a miniature. And this was a detailed sculpting process to try to create a stylized version of the characters that it looked enough like them to believe that it was them, but not too much that it started to feel a bit awkward and uncanny. It's not exactly sculpted to perfection. The idea is that they've been printed or they've been painted. If the imperfections are too regular, they kind of become a pattern. And once something becomes a pattern, it looks generated. So he's trying to add all these kind of kinks in there and applying them subtly so that you don't see them across all the shots. You don't see them looping in the same shot. It could be like a flicker in a light source. So it just kind of comes lo a little bit lower. It could be a little flare hitting a shiny surface. We also added things like fingerprints and marks and scratches. That was the kind of trick of trying to break things to make things feel less CG, more real. The artists had a few inputs. 21 Savage told us in no uncertain terms that he would not be riding on a BMX bike. So we had to start changing the scene around and then actually diving a little deeper into it. It turns out he was very happy to be on a motorized dirt bike. Tyler, the creator, was keen to have his head on the body of a female dancer. And also he wanted to make sure he had his Louis Vuitton suitcases. He wanted a beach element. That's why he's bouncing on a beach ball. They were participating in the creative process. Traditionally, you would storyboard and then plan the shots. But for this project, where everything is literally in the background of every other scene, it was impossible for us to storyboard it. So we built a prototype version of it, and we could fly our CG animated cameras around, and we created a series of overlength brushes, which we supplied to Francois and the editor, which they used to then build the story. You can't just have an object spinning for three minutes. It's insanely boring. Even it's mesmerizing, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not energetic, it's not dynamic, it's not fitting the track. So we needed to film it. I think that was quite a first to actually make shot out of a Zootrop. The more we advance, the more we kind of simplify it. So if you look well at it, the music video is shot as if it was a physical object. It could be 3D, but there is no like flying camera. It's like, if you look at it, it's like fixed shot, dolly, back, dolly front, a little bit of crane. Also to blend the limits and the frontiers in between real and not real and always playing on that thing that people would not know until we released the behind the scene if it was real or not. Because when the video was released, 99% of the comments talking about the video were like, is that for real or not? And with the time, we kind of 
went more pure and longer shots, simpler edits, physical camera, not make it gimmicky, but a bit more uh, simple and classic in a good way. On the tech uh, side, there was, there was a lot of uh, changes. I mean, the, the first one is like, we all have to learn the rules of Zootrop. To create the illusion of motion with a Zootrop, you have an original slice, and then you have 24 copies of the same slice with each statue being a slightly different frame of the animation. You spin it at the right speed, and then you hit it with a strobe light, so you only see one frame at a time, and it creates this illusion at 12 frames per second. In the process of doing this, we kept running up against the idea that two seconds is not very much time to tell a good story. And we realized that there's actually a way of creating a four second loop, which involves two copies of the same character doing an action, but one disappears and replaces the other. And there's several examples of this in the film. One is Tyler escaping from the suitcase pile, and the other is uh, the Incredible Hulk savage jumping. So once you have all these sort of animation loops happening, the Zotro is spinning and then the cameras are moving as well. You've got to kind of like guide the viewer's eye of where to look, what to look at, when to switch actions. And that was a huge challenge. And it was exploration into camera moves and uh, simplifying things and kind of throwing the focus out or simplifying the background through lighting or fall off of light, presenting it in a way where people could follow what's going on. The lip sync was sort of one of the biggest technical challenges. And it's quite hard to read lip sync when it's on twos anyway because you kind of you miss words being pronounced and some of the key movements there was no motion capture or lots of references to look at so it was the animators having to kind of embody the, the artists get into them look at their little characteristics all the sort of niche things they do through just youtube and performances and then getting across in the animation one of the challenges for this film was we set all these rules and created these set of two second loops to create all the action and tell the story but Lip sync may take three, four, even five seconds to tell, or say, a line. And so we had to create a system for breaking the rules so that the little characters could actually say their lines across the loop. And we had to come up with a way of then bringing them back into the scene so that they still had the kind of textural offsets to create that physical illusion. It was a real challenge to find the creative side of the lighting as well. We honed in on a couple of really cool references with Francois and focus in on what we ended up calling a kind of two-tone lighting. And this was to have uh, a strong sense of color on one side and a strong contrasting color on the other side, for example, red on one side and blue on the other, but not allowing them to mix. So there was no pink or purple in the middle. And this allowed us to have a very rich and uh, saturated color palette. Each scene has a different strong color set of choices. As soon as we saw all the different lighting setups in white, great, big, wide, it looked like a sort of a Christmas tree. Uh, and that wasn't exactly the sort of hip hop vibe that we were going for. So we had to approach those slightly differently and come up with a new look. When you do a music video, you do different sets. You will maybe make uh, a different lighting, a different color selection. You can't have only one light setup for the old Zootrop because everything will look the same. So challenge was like each time you land on, on one scene, there's a slight change of colors and lighting, but it's invisible in the end. It's quite complicated the way uh, the guys at ETC have, have been able to come up with this. This project had a little bit more time. It's an example of a bit kind of higher level of creative execution that can be possible with a bit more time. It's like a fine process where we got it wrong, we scrap stuff, we do it again, we reanimate things. So we have time to refine it. It was really important that the artist really bought into Francois and his, his vision. It's trust and time. Of course, the idea is cool. Of course, the VFX company is amazing. Of course, the track is amazing, big time. But why is it the best video of the year? Because it's the video of the year that had the more time and the more trust. And I'm 100% sure that if we would give more time to artists, give more time to directors, to post-production company, we would see more quality jobs like that.